Yo, what's good? It's me, your guy, all the way from bed Stuy, Habo, and I'm here today for another episode of The Art Block with none other than the incomparable Shy towns finest, Morgan Nicolette. Morgan, how you doing? Hello. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. The, the weather's hot, the AC's on, so we just vibing. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been like monsoon weather here for the last week, to be honest. Oh, man. In Shy town in Chicago? Yeah, it's been like pouring rain. It's wow. pretty bad. It's actually, it, in retrospective, it's funny. If you look up like Chicago floods, TikToks, it's, it's, you see people just having a blast because Chicagoans can't take anything serious. So. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like just black people can't take anything seriously anyway. But I do have a bone yeah. to pick with you. I have a bone to pick with you yeah. immediately into this episode. All my Ooh, life, okay. all my life, I've been told that Chicago is known for deep dish pizza, that Chicago is known for having this weird casserole-like thing. But come to find out, you've been lying to us. Y'all have been lying to us for years, and you need to explain yourself right now because that is not what y'all eat. That's not what the locals eat. What do the locals eat? Because I know. Oh. I know. It's not deep dish pizza. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> The locals, we we honest to God eat anything but deep dish. I it's like kind of funny the two things that Chicago is, uh, is known for. The locals actually do not eat. It's like the deep dish pizza and then that malort alcohol. No one likes either of those things a lot. I mean, some people love deep dish. I'm not one of them, but some people really do love it. But I don't know. I usually just get barbecue. We I'm I live around the corner from Limbs, which is like this amazing. Uh, old school like barbecue place in chicago on 75th street so i just i, I like barbecue <laughs> nice nice i love barbecue too I'm, my family's from the south so we get down with that as well so are you chicago born and bred i am i am entirely chicago born and bred That's my mother up. is also entirely chicago born and bred my dad's a texan but uh he might as well be chicago too but. okay <laughs> <laughs> so what is the art scene like down there because i know nothing about it it's actually really amazing so the chicago art scene is really unique in the sense that i feel like all the chicago no artists eventually we all kind of like know of each other like <laughs> it makes sense like i'll be like at a gallery and i look up this artist and i'll be like oh i've seen their art or like i meet someone and then i look at their profile or their portfolio and i'm like oh they did this awesome like mural up on like fuller tent or something and it's it's really nice it's close-knit for sure i would say it's not as big as i think the new york or like los angeles scenes are but it's um it's still like pretty out there it's still very very fruitful and very close-knit i would say that's really dope. Are there any galleries or museums that you love going to or that you've been featured oh. in yourself? Oh, yeah. So I am absolutely in love with the museum scene in Chicago. And I think that's like part of the reason why I'm an artist, because I grew up um, in like CPS, uh, Chicago public schools. I recognize it has a different meaning uh, outside of Chicago. <laughs> yeah. so I, I was about to say, like, hold on, what? <laughs> no, I did not grow up on Child Protective Services, yeah. no, no, it's Chicago Public Schools. We 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 shorten it to CPS here, so just clarifying that. I saw the look on your face, and I was like, okay, I got I got to make sure I, I specify that. But <laughs> but um, so I my um my schools and art teachers they would love to take us to like the Art Institute, which is like probably one of the most like world renowned museums. So we're very lucky in the sense that you can always catch a new exhibit like any time of the month, like essentially at either the Art Institute or the uh, Museum of Contemporary Art, which is kind of close to the Art Institute. And then there's the Museum of Science and Industry, which also does like pretty cool rotating things. So Chicagoans have an abundance of museums to go to. And the gallery scenes are, there's a lot of little tiny galleries. Um, that host more contemporary art and that's always cool i remember one day in college one of my close friends and i we started since we both lived on the south side we just started uh we got on the train uh and the buses the bus we started with the bus then we went to the train and then we gallery hopped all the way up to the north side with the train and oh, gallery wow. hopped all the way down. and we went to i think about 
20 galleries that day Damn. and we just like looked at art like all day long it was a full adventure <laughs> that sounds amazing so what got to you at that point where you're just like all right maybe i should start doing this professionally did you go to school you went to school for it first and then you were like all right now i'm gonna be painting like for monies <laughs> <laughs> so i had a, a bit of like a non-traditional I, I don't know if it's if, if anything an art is traditional routes to be honest right. so i i, I guess yeah, that's a good way. I don't know. Like, usually when I see people, like, with art school and stuff like that, I usually say that would be, like, the quote-unquote traditional route. I did not do a traditional route at all, like, whatsoever. So, growing up, I loved art, and I had been drawing since I was, like, six or, or so. Like, really young. Like, like, extremely young. My mom said that when I was in kindergarten, they would tell her how visually advanced I was, so they assumed that, like, I would, like, I would always have like an inclination to be like an artist. So my mom always bought me art stuff, but in true, you know, ethnic parent fashion, that's not like the, the viable art career. Uh, art career is not viable, mm -hmm. you know, especially um, my mom's like a nurse. So it, it, mm -hmm. she's already a medicine and it, it just wasn't going to fly. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like art was good as a hobby and that's what was always preached to me. Um, so despite doing like all art in high school, school and I did all types of like art programs. When I got to college, I actually majored in biology and minored in chemistry. Whoa. And okay, <laughs> scientists. Yeah, so, so clearly I hated Dr. Myself. Morgan. Yes, yeah. hello. <laughs> no, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> My mom might hear you. <laughs> so be like, no, but what happened? I, was, I wanted to do, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. So I went down like the whole list of like healthcare careers and I ended up landing on the idea of working in a lab when I like worked in a lab I found it was very similar to working with art because it's just you in a room alone with this thing that you are working on and it's the same like um it's kind of like a meditative state like art's very meditative and I found working in a lab was also very meditative because I was just kind of like following this protocol and arts very much following steps in two. So I was like, oh, I can, I think I could do this. Um, I then worked in the field for two years after college and decided I absolutely hated it. <laughs> 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 like, I think there was like a day I woke up and then for the first time ever, I think I was like exactly 21 and I could feel the happiness leave my body just from waking up and the wow. <laughs> And I just was like, oh, no, this is not how like, I'm too young to yeah. be this unhappy already. And so while I was in the lab, I was expressing my concerns to the person I was closest with, which was like a postdoc. And he was like, well, why don't you just be a medical illustrator? He's like, you're good at drawing and you have the, the science background. And I was like, that's a thing. And he was like, yeah, that's a thing. And then so he actually helped me look up the programs. And it turns out there was four programs in the entirety of the United States. Wow. Not even the United States. Four of just North America, because one was in Toronto. Wow. And ironically, or luckily, in my case, one was at University of Illinois. Well, oh, that's <laughs> super lucky. Good yeah. lord. <laughs> <laughs> super lucky. So on top of that, I got in-state tuition when I went. So Oh, <laughs> it was, okay. It was amazing. So I, I ended up working... I worked for like two years in the lab still, but I also was like working on like uh, my portfolio to apply. And I applied and from nine to five, I am now a medical illustrator. And then from five, from six to whatever time of night, I do fine art. And it, it's a really nice life balance to be able to actually draw all day. And I'm very lucky. I recognize that too. Because mm -hmm. I just kind of just draw injuries all day long. I work for like a hub of a law firm. And uh, we have different like, clients that ask us to illustrate different things. And then um, I also sell a lot of fine art stuff. As you see, that's how we met through my fine art yeah. like, side. So I, the work-life balance is really makes me really happy. So I basically just do art all day long now. That's awesome. That is, honestly, that is probably like the most perfect setup because there's so many people <laughs> that are like looking for that type of balance or looking for that type of stability. And it's just like, boom you got it now do you ever feel fatigued or worn out because you are drawn all day for the medical illustrations but then you also come home to do you know 20 hours of a painting because those are very 
very intricate paintings that you do not to mention that you do extra bits that you put cardboard and paint over that like i've seen your process and i'm just like <laughs> now that i know you do this other stuff it's like how do you have time to do all of that um i i think coffee i think okay. it's the best <laughs> I think I okay. I am like an avid coffee drinker. Like I genuinely like once I was like so working, being majoring in bio and minoring in chem is is I don't know how to say it. It's not for the weak. Um, and it genuinely taught me work ethic really well. Like that's the one thing I will say. I'm happy about what I majored in because I think I learned work ethic very well being in STEM. And I've also learned a lot about coffee. So I drink <laughs> in the more I've like the best part about being a chem chemistry minor was learning how to like optimize the human body. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. <laughs> so, literally, I have a ritual every morning. If I don't do it, I will be fatigued. Uh, so you. it's basically I just I take care of my body essentially. Work out in the mornings, very first thing I do, and then drink a bunch of water, and then drink caffeine, and make sure I eat my veggies. Okay, um, I'm glad you put that extra stuff in there because it's like people are gonna be like, "Oh my god, all she does is drink coffee." I gotta do that too. And then you got people in the hospital like, "Oh, I did no, no, no. was drink I, coffee." It's actually more important. This is like, sorry, this is my uh, health, my my healthcare side. It's more important to drink a lot of water in the morning because that's what jump starts your system. So as long as you drink a lot of water and caffeine, you will be fine. And then around 4 p.m., I do it again, and then it gives me my second wind. <laughs> Okay, when so do you sleep? I, I I sleep at eleven. I don't know. Okay. Like I, I usually usually go to bed at like I actually I have a terrible sleep schedule, I won't even lie to you. It's sometimes I try I aim for eleven, but you know when you're in flow state, sometimes it, it's you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, sometimes yeah. it just winds up being one AM or so, but I don't know. I'm okay with not having the best sleep schedule at this point in my life if that makes sense um like i tried to have it but i, I can't no judgment here it's anymore. your life hey. yeah. yeah i can't fight it anymore yeah. I, I, I can't i can't be one of those people i tried i literally tried and i'm just living my best life now like i stayed up last night till like 2 a.m watching interstellar just because it was nice Yo, and then I, yeah. I love that movie so much but i hate so the ending did, how did you feel about the ending it got really abstract I'm yeah, not... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, come on. All right, we just did all this cool sciencey stuff, and now it's just like, Merv, I was your ghost. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> come on, Matthew. I was like, it, was, it was a good like closing the circle, but it was definitely got a bit abstract at the yeah. end. I was like, oh, okay, this is this is what's happening. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so going back, you mentioned that you have this meditative state when you're creating your art, and then when you're doing the medical illustrations, would you say that? that process and also just creating art in general can be therapeutic even if you're not someone who does art on a regular oh yeah i definitely think so art's like one of those things that it forces um i know like some people like it forces like mindfulness so mindfulness like you know is like the being in the state of mind where you are more concerned about what is exactly in front of you versus like thinking about other things that are not present um, so usually I think from the books I've read, stress kind of stems from rumination and thinking about other things that are not exactly in the present. Um, unless you are in a stressful situation, that's a different, but if you are not in a stressful situation, but your mind is like ruminating on a stressful thing, then that kind of like brings you out of the present. So mindfulness is just like being mindful of like the moment and art really does fo force you to do that. You know, like you're very mindful of how your hand is, how your body is, how your posture is, what this stroke or paint is doing and like blending, like you're very focused on the now right in front of you. And I feel like even if you aren't a person who does art on the regular, even just doodling is a big stress relief because it takes your mind off of things and it makes you focus on like whatever it is you're doodling. So I highly recommend art to everybody because right. of that. Yeah, I, I yeah. definitely agree. I think once you get that out, even if it's just like you said, a doodle, sometimes you just feel good to express yourself. Now, going yeah. deeper into the meditative state, do you ever find yourself like super zoned out? And, and then like, let's say it's 2 p.m. and then you wake up, it's 3 a.m. <laughs> Does that ever happen to you? Yeah, yeah there's definitely uh, my week. My weekends can get away from me if I'm not careful. I'm glad I'm not the only <laughs> like, one. I'll okay. 
<laughs> it's so bad sometimes. Like I definitely, um, I usually, I set the standard low for myself so I don't stress myself out too much, but I always be like, oh, I'll just paint for like an hour or 30 minutes. And the next thing you know, it's been four hours. And I'm like, that is not, <laughs> not what I have plans been. <laughs> You got to set those alarms. <laughs> yeah, I got to set those alarms for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're like listening to music and you, you know, you get into right. it. Right. Your stuff, classical right? music, according to Threads. <laughs> yes. I've it's been a, I love classical music. You can, I have um, Final Fantasy to thank for that. They, oh. they were my segue. That, into, wow. Okay. That's, that's right. not what I thought you were going to say at all. Final Fantasy? <laughs> It's a surprise for people. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's talk about that. I, so, like, where did that come from? What did Final Fantasy? How did that lead you to classical? It was a, when I was a kid. I loved Final Fantasy games, specifically Final Fantasy X is my all-time favorite oh, video that is game. A and the sound, yeah, and my 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 little tiny like grade school brain was like, "What is this music?" And I just like listened to the piano versions of that all the time, and I was like how can I get more of like this sound? And then that's when I discovered that all the instruments that they use in like the Final Fantasy um, soundtracks are technically classical instruments. Mm -hmm. So I, I now have a deep attachment to classical music because it reminds me of Final Fantasy. <laughs> that's beautiful. I love that. <laughs> like that's so random and beautiful at the same time. It's like, who else is going to be out there saying that? That's dope. Um <laughs> definitely random I have yeah. to know. <laughs> it's funny because my introduction to it i don't know if you saw my reply on threads but mine was just my mom brought some cds when i was a kid and then i would just listen to that in my downtime and that's how i got into classical and then i got really obsessed with mozart and then when that movie amadeus right. came out it was a rap i was just like oh my god this is like <laughs> this dude is crazy he's sleeping with his cousin and he's famous what <laughs> How is this happening? <laughs> this goes on and on. Yeah. yeah, it's just it's so cool. I don't know. Classical music slaps. Like it really does. Like when you actually get into it. You're oh yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. These people look crazy. This is amazing. Yeah, I think some of them might just be. They not. They might not even be human. Honestly, because how can you come up with that off off the rip? Like you just sitting there like with your feather pen. Like oh yes, of course. Yeah. And boom. Yeah. You got like, you got a whole thing. Like, like they were really going at it. Yeah. When <laughs> Like that's what I like. I like about it because I can like imagine whoever like wrote this. I was like the hardest beats to drop of the 16th century. Like, Yo, imagine, you imagine. Yo, Beethoven just dropped a hot 16. Yeah, it was like Sinatra of the seven. Just, like, <laughs> Would you say you're primarily with traditional art, or have you done some digital work as well? I'm um i'm versed in both i mainly like to do traditional art for like my free time because i really enjoy i'm a very like kinetic person with my hands so i like to strictly do like all my personal work it has to be very handsy and more crafty i think that's why i really love doing the uh, the cutouts a lot because it's very hands-on um digital art i've always the learning curve for digital art with me was strong especially like you understand like as a millennial like we grew up in the technology boom so it was like the second that you learned one thing not even a year later it was obsolete and it was right. like, <laughs> it was just like cause like i remember when adobe and photoshop first came out and those controls look so different than where it is now and just learning for learning the new version of Photoshop every year was so stressful to me to the point that I didn't even want to look at it. And <laughs> then I remember I finally understood how to like, I got the hang of like the Wacom tablet. And then next thing you know, they finally came out with like, you could draw on the screens. And I was like, yeah. I just, the handle. Of the <laughs> <laughs> and now now I have an iPad uh, and use Procreate to draw digitally. And for medical illustrations, it's all digital. We work exclusively in the Adobe suite. So, okay. Yeah. All right. So, all right. So, because I know sometimes when I meet traditional artists, they're just like completely alienated from it, from the digital aspect. And they're like, oh, I can't do that. But the fact that you do incorporate that into your daily life, that's, that's really dope. And I think that it's important to know both things. I think there's 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 benefits to having traditional training and benefits to having digital training because you never know when one is going to be good for something else or a different project or a client or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think like digital, it's also nice to like kind of like the tools to help they help each other out. Like I feel like 
learning traditional is good for like rendering skills. Like I feel like it's um, if you start with learning how to render traditionally, you translate so much easier to digital um, rendering. And then uh, vice versa, though, with like digital, I feel like helps you with proportions a lot. I don't know how to describe that, but digital art really does help you get proportions correct. Um, and then you can use those same practices with like traditional, like flipping the canvas. I didn't think about that until I was working in like digital. And then now I look at my traditional art through a mirror when I want to make sure that my proportions are correct oh. because I wouldn't have never thought to flip or view it differently uh, yeah. if I had not worked through digital stuff. That's a clever, you just dropped the gym. I bet you everybody watching right now, they're going to be like, oh my God, I'm going to use a mirror. Let me go to the dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know like a couple, I think DaVinci used a mirror a lot. Um, I, I was like, thought about it after I did digital. I looked it up like, can traditional artists flip, <laughs> flip their canvas? <laughs> and some people say, and I, and that's when I started researching that a lot of like the older masters sometimes would put their canvases sideways or upside down or look at it through a mirror to catch anything. And right. I started incorporating that in my practice and that boosted me up a lot with like making sure my proportions were correct. Right. Now, when I found you, you were just in the midst of doing that. Um, I don't even know if I, forgive me if I don't know the correct name, but you were doing the series with the cutouts, the paintings with the cutouts. How did that mm, yeah. come about for you? Because it's so vastly different from anything I've seen. And I, you know, I see a lot of art and I feel like yours adds a, a element of depth to it that we don't commonly get to view on a daily basis. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a, God, how do I explain this? So I have without, so I have actually been doing like cutout stuff for all my, my art career, but I just only recently went viral in 2021. Okay. <laughs> it was like, um, I like, so when I was in high school, instead of using like cutout pieces, like hardboard, like the more professional grade stuff, I would take pieces of paper and kind of like stack them and cut them in like unique ways and then paint on them. And that was actually like something I did for like my AP concentration as a teenager was like 3D-ish art. It wasn't as 3D as it is now, but it it was like an interest of mine to like kind of have the figures and different subjects coming out of the canvas. I thought it was really compositionally interesting. And then I went back to like forgetting about that for my entire college career. And then... <laughs> And then I came back to it um, around, I think, 2021, when I was, like, sitting around bored with my paintings because they were all flat. And I just thought about, I was like, oh, well, I did do this thing in high school where I was taking pieces of paper and stacking them on top of each other and trying to make, like, interesting shapes with the paper before I painted. And I was like, I wonder if I can try that with canvas. And then I did a bunch of trial and error uh, material. And then I finally found something that worked. <laughs> and I started painting that, that way again. And now I've decided to keep it within my work because I it makes me excited uh, to do, makes me really excited to Makes paint. me really excited. So really, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it was, it's one of my favorite uh, things to do is like actually construct the canvas. It's like an art form in itself outside of the painting. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. I feel like, I now want to try something like that because it's just so cool. And like, if you feel like I'm biting off you, you can be like, yo, chill. That's my thing. I'm like, all right, oh, you got it. Right. <laughs> I am not the first person to make unique canvas shapes. I will never be that gatekeeper. Like, I promise you. <laughs> like it'll be okay. Like there's actually, um, God, I wrote his name down somewhere. I, I'll have to give it to you later, but there's like a really famous artist, actually. His name, I think, starts with a D, David or something. Mm -hmm. I forgot his last name. I think it's like, his initials are DG, okay. but he actually um, used to, he handmade his own canvases, but he was abstract art. Wow. So instead of like, um, you know how a lot of like abstract art was just like on plain rectangle canvases, he decided to take it to the next level and make actual abstract shapes out of his canvases. And I forgot his name, but his stuff is really cool. Um, and so I, I'm definitely not the first person to construct my own canvas and make the shapes interesting. So please, you're not biting off of me. That's just <laughs> it's just something else, something something to do, something exciting. Yeah. Plus, you have your own style and cool, so it'll never be that. biting or anything of that. Yeah. Yeah, because like, you know how some people every, get 
when they when they see somebody like, oh, you copying off a of so and so style, you copying off of this technique. It's like, fam, like art, yeah. art is, it's, it's, is we absorb everything we see. You know, even if we're not consciously thinking about it, we we eventually end up doing something that might be similar to what we've seen before. Yeah, and it's all like also about just like you know, as long as it's not like direct plagiarism, right? It's, it's fine. Like, it's, but it's like you know, I feel like people can take concepts and make their own uh, style of art out of it. Because like, look at how many. I don't know. I, I I read a lot, and I can say that I think I've read the same premise of a book at least a hundred times, especially with like romance books. Oh, like, yeah. it, it's all kind of, it all starts <laughs> off the same. But the thing is, like, the authors are all so unique and diverse that it's like the books end up being unique despite the premise being the same. And essentially, it's the same with like visual artists too. Like, you can start with the same premise of like uniquely shaped canvases but people can always make it different because they have each have their own voice and th- something different to say so yeah i love that and you went viral in 2021 what was the piece or the video or the form of content that you had up that like threw you into the stratosphere it was actually the very first piece i did with the new cutouts <laughs> <laughs> It was um, my overgrown piece. Um, it was the, a painting I did of my best friend. Um, and it was the, the green leaves that were coming out of the canvas. Yeah. I had asked her to like, braid her hair together like as one loop to make like an interesting like art piece. And so we were, so I actually asked her to like pose for me. So like, wow. I grew up drawing her since we, we she's an artist too. Like yeah. we grew up drawing together and we always draw each other and like once a year we draw each other just as like friends like something like a ritual that we have and i decided i was like oh i kind of want to paint you and i also want to try this new thing out and she's like oh so cool so took the reference photos got pizza and i just started painting <laughs> it and i kid you not i think i had like 200 followers on twitter when that happened yeah. and so like i was just doing it to do it for myself you know i've never really really worried about the the follower aspect or viral aspect of it. And then I think I, I posted that and I went on my like daily wa- run directly after posting that. And oh my God, it was like an hour. I don't know. It was like, <laughs> like I just started, like I, I looked at my phone and I just like got a, like immediate spike of anxiety because there's so many notifications and I thought someone had like died or something. I was like, wow. What's that? <laughs> Dude, that's your first thought like, someone died. <laughs> I was at that point. I was like, "Is this 2021?" It's like I had never True. had a popular yeah. like social media before, so I was so confused. I was like, "Who are you people?" And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized it was because um, my my post was was going viral, and all my friends had seen it go viral, and everyone was like trying to like hit me up at that moment, like, "Yo, did you see that Kalani retweeted your picture?" <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "No, I'm, I'm outside right now. I'm touching grass. I'm not alive." Like, <laughs> but, but yeah, that brought great, great. Uh, that was like my first like uh, touch of like vi- viralness, and I was also like really nice. I don't know how to say it. It was like a nice. Um, I don't know. How, I don't know other word to use besides validation about like the new form. Of art that I was using absolutely because uh, that was my first time doing like the going back to the cutouts because I hadn't done them since like high school and yeah. I redid them with like my more advanced skill set now and it seemed like it, it was really well received and I was very happy that it was well received <laughs> that's amazing that is so amazing so do you enjoy social media or do you just, you just using it because it helps with you know getting clients or being seen I I okay, I have a love hate relationship with social media yeah, for yeah. sure. I like it for building art community. So I absolutely adore reaching out and being friends with artists online. Um, like I think that's like my only goal with social media is just to gather art friends, like little like infinity stones. Like that's, that's <laughs> not you Thanos do. out here, like, yeah. <laughs> just like one by one. <laughs> I really enjoy <laughs> like I'm, I'm a big um i'm like a I, I enjoy friendship and like connecting with people so i like the social media aspect for finding all these cool artists and like connecting with people and being like hey let's hang out sometime if you're in city chicago or like going to see people's art or like if i'm i know recently um there was a 
you might know him, Dimitri Victor, I think, on Twitter. He, Sounds familiar. He's like, yeah, he's an African American artist or black artist. I could be wrong about that one. We gotta make sure because after <laughs> what happened, well, what's his name? We gotta make uh, yeah. sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know Dimitri is definitely black. I, I don't know if he's African American, but he's black. Yeah. I'll say he's a black artist. <laughs> and I saw one of his pieces at uh, Art Expo, and I pointed it out to my friends I was with. I was like, "Yo, I'm Twitter mutuals with this dude," and so like. I enjoy it for that aspect of it, like, you know, uplifting the communities yeah. and getting to know people. But I do hate that it, I think, instills a level of, like, social pressure onto artists. And I feel like there's a very thin line with social media because I feel like sometimes artists, you know, everyone has their own pace. Um, but social media awards frequent fast art. Um, and that can get kind of tricky with art artists because it can make the thin line of are you an artist or are you a content creator because like you don't want to sacrifice your craft and speed things up and rush it for the sake of like an algorithm mm. so and i I've, I've seen people fall victim to that where i've seen them move towards things that are just uh, <laughs> <laughs> you you yeah you get it it's, it's, yeah. it's a hard like line like i've seen people move towards things that just they can get done quickly for the sake of like gaining traction quickly and i'm someone who definitely as you said i do very intricate paintings yes uh, so i just there's no there's never gonna be a day where i can ever rush that and i think when i first went viral because that was my first like inkling of like people eyes on my art that were not like the city of Sh within the city of chicago i did fall victim to that a little bit where i felt like i was trying to rush and get things out quickly and make all these random videos and stuff. But I had never done that before. And then that's when I realized I was like, I'm not trying to make content. I'm just an artist. Um, like, I'm just trying to make sure my craft is well done and it, you know, brings me joy. And I don't want to accidentally kick the joy out of it because I'm trying to mm. please. Uh, and please, whatever algorithm they have changed for the 30th time this year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you speak to that of that need or that feeling that we usually or possibly end up getting to want to create all the time because we want to keep up with the algorithms? What would you say to an artist, whether they're young or old or new to social media or been around for a while? What do you say to that person that is feeling that pressure and is nervous and they don't know what to do? I would say that social media is just one avenue of see, getting your art out there. Um, I think it's a, it's a good avenue, it's a viable avenue, and it's the most accessible avenue, but it is not the only avenue. I think it's important that if you feel as if it is taking away from like your happiness and your craft and making you not like doing art because you feel like you're rushing things, it might be not the best path for you to take as an artist. I know that's kind of like where I'm at. Like, I'm, I don't make as much art as I think other people do. Um, and I just feel like I'm okay with that because I spend more time working with gallerists and building, like, clientele in, like, my, my city and my local city and, like, getting to know more local artists and stay inside of, like, my local art scene. And that is just as fulfilling, if not more fulfilling, to be honest. Um, so it's one of those things where it's like you kind of have to balance that because some of the most famous artists you know actually have less than 10k followers on twitter <laughs> that's true so it's yeah so it's just like um if you feel like you are not a person that you can work if you feel like you're fighting against the algorithm it might be better to go look at the other viable avenues that might just be well suited for your you know your your pace Wonderful advice. Wonderful advice. Now, before we switch over to our next activity, our next segment, I want you to talk about your recent project that you did. Um, I can't remember the name of the organization, but you were you were part of a, a group oh. that painted on the skateboards. You created a whole skateboard. I watched the video on YouTube and you guys, if you haven't seen it, you need to go. Oh, I'm going to put it. You. I'm going to put the link in the description. But it was it was so great to see your process and then just see how you took that digital image and then put it on the board and just did, you know, did the Morgan Nicolette treatment on it. So what was that like for you? How did you come across that? And do you want to do things like that in the future? I know there's like three questions, but just go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's totally fine. So, okay. Uh, I'll start with how I came across it. So um, just speaking about like 
I mean, that actually piggybacks really well off of the whole avenues thing. So the show that I was a part of is actually a really popular gallery in Chicago called All Star Press. Shout out to All Star Press. They are awesome people. Um, I will send you their link so you can show yeah. other people the links. So <laughs> they they are a wonderful like gallery in Chicago that works with like contemporary artists and especially like artists who like to do less like traditional things if that makes sense I, like very more like street art like type of style mm -hmm. and it's more more to like the curated to like the age groups of like gen y and gen z and gen alpha like the latter three generations interest and um they reached out to me the curator who person who's curating the show reached out and asked me if i would want to make a skateboard uh for this show it was going to be over 100 artists and i was like Hell yeah, let's do this. <laughs> I've always, I grew up uh, liking skateboards and stuff. And I was like, that sounds like I would love to relive that part of my childhood. So <laughs> I was like, I'll totally go for it. Um, and that's pretty much how I got that. And it was, I, that was mainly through, once again, like the connections of like building like the art community within like Chicago. Like the person who was curating it was a fan of my art and I was, mutually a fan of his art and he was just like oh yeah i know you i know I mean, he so you just start bringing people that he knows on so it's kind of like that that art community within like your city and then and now i just kind of work with the gallery a lot um uh yeah so the skateboard show was really really cool and got to meet more people who were artists in chicago that way so it's really awesome yeah, that's amazing. I mean, just sitting there. Also, what was interesting is that, and this this can be another question too. The the very beginning of that video, you projected the artwork onto the skateboard. Now, I've seen this really weird. I don't know what it is sometimes, but I feel like online, on social media, artists have like really dumb debates about. Oh, you probably you're smiling because you yeah. probably know what I'm about to get to. They get to really dumb debates about like, oh, tracing and oh this and oh that, and it's just like. Do y'all not know how like things are done outside of Twitter? You know, like how did how do you like how do people just not know? So, do you do that sort of process often, or is that just for the skateboard, or is that something you want to do? You know, in the future, like more of that so, practice. I have found that I absolutely adore hand. So it's it's truly like a preference. I will say I will start off by saying when I do see those debates. I used to be that person when I was 16 and uninformed. And that is an opinion <laughs> that I think people have when they are uninformed. Because the second I got to medical illustration school and that training program, the very first thing you learned is genuinely to just trace your references because time is money. Like, if you know... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Pause right there, <laughs> rewind, and say that one more time. Say it one more time for them. <laughs> When I got to professional art school, <laughs> they said, trace your references because time is money. Thank like, you. The, my, my professor was like, we all know everyone in here can draw. Your client does not care. If you freehand something and you mess it up and you redo it three times, they will not care. They won't give you extra money for that. So if you're doing like a professional job, it's better to be accurate than it is to have like that. I did this all from scratch no help type of no tools type of thing um i personally for my personal work i love freehanding i like i just love the feeling of like pencil and paper and stuff so i personally freehand my drawings that i my paintings that my personal ones mm -hmm. but for work that, that doesn't my my work I, I trace right out the bat because they don't care about that yeah like like if i need to have a surgical illustration done in two days they will not care how it gets done as long as it gets done and it looks good at the end of the day so yeah i'm glad you clarified on that because i know there's a lot of people out there they just be like oh my god this person's tracing look out oh my god look what they're doing because there was this other thing called photo bashing i just learned about and basically you're, you're taking like different pieces of images to create a brand new one so like if someone's designing like a fantasy character they'll get a picture of a sword and shield and then they'll also get yeah. like maybe someone wearing a, a fashion week paris dress and then they trace all of that combine it create a new character i'm like hey whatever however you get to your art it don't matter you know what i'm saying yes, as long yes. as you still know how to you know yeah. do x y and z and know how to color and all that that's fine that's fine yeah that's how i feel like i know like 
for me, I just like the the act of drawing. So I draw all of like my sketches for my paintings because I just like the way the feeling of it. But it's it's not like a needed step. So like if people want to do that or they photo bash and then they like project it on a canvas, that is also a valuable way to go about it because rendering itself is a, a really big skill. Sometimes people would say the rendering is sometimes more important than the sketch. So absolutely i need to let you know this is sponsored by my patreon members over at patreon.com slash haptoons patreon is really dope because it allows me to do my work and make youtube content full time and this is also a great place for you the viewer the fans the members to connect with me on a deeper level where you get early access to new projects and exclusive projects that you won't see anywhere else and there's a lot going on i'm posting very frequently more so here than any other platform so if you want to check out what's going on and you want to support head over to patreon.com slash haptoons today and sign up now. now. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back here with Morgan Nicolette for the art block. I don't know why I have this accent all of a sudden. Maybe it's because I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna we're gonna use this really awesome web-based app that is not sponsoring me, so I'm not gonna name them. But if you're interested, the link will be in the description. And we're gonna draw some stuff. We're gonna we're gonna make some characters, and we're gonna chat about you know pop culture and yada yada yada. You already know the vibes. I, I, I was trying to draw like a little fishy. <laughs> oh, 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 that don't no no that don't like a fit. Don't get me banned on YouTube. No, okay, I'll I'll make <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll draw it in quickly. So this Barbie likes art. <laughs> <laughs> this Ken is a ten. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good one. That's a good one. Oh my god, I'm so excited because so many actors are in it. Uh, this one guy, he's he's um, actually going to be starring in his own series very soon. His name is Kuti Gatwa, and he's going to be the new Doctor Who. I don't know how familiar you are with that show, but it's like the I... only thing br the the UK has. <laughs> <laughs> I like know of it. Uh, but I, I do not, uh, never actually really watched it. Okay, wait, well, you know, that's a lie. I watched the Van Gogh episode because of course you did. Of course around you did. me suggested I should watch it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was, a, like, imagine, imagine someone came back to the past, like, today, and was like, yo, 20 years from now, 40 years, 100 years from now, you're, like, the biggest artist on the planet. And then you go see your work, and you're just like, I would, I would pass out. I think I, I was too. out. Yeah, that episode was really sad, though. Like, yeah. <laughs> but it was really good. Honestly, if they did any artist, it would probably be the same thing. That's just, it would be, that's just yeah. the nature of, of this lifestyle. It is. But he really Oof. went through it like, damn. You know what I mean? Like, he was yeah, lonely. He, they didn't like him. Like, Yeah. When you actually learn about Van Gogh's life, you're like, hmm, this is actually all very depressing. Yeah. So, was he also like, the one that cut his ear off? Somebody cut their ear off, was it him? Yeah. Yeah, that was him. Yeah. <laughs> like the more you learn about Van Gogh, the sadder it actually gets. Yeah. I remember one time someone told me, like, you could be the next Van Gogh. And then oh, I was God. like, don't, don't don't tell me that. Like I like my ears. Give me somebody much. pleasant. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, <laughs> yeah, like give me someone who had like not depression. I don't know. Like yeah. I got it too, but I don't want to be known for it. <laughs> Yo, to be honest, I think majority of us do like i was surprised i remember growing up and when robin williams did what he did i was like you got to be kidding me because that was yeah. like the most happiest dude you know in the universe he played a genie you know what i'm saying he was mork he was mrs doubtfire like how are you upset yeah or depressed? it's always like the happiest people yeah it's which is really like you never really see it coming yeah he would kill today if he was on social media oh my god he would be genuinely the best. Yeah. yeah. He would kill on threads, I tell you that. <laughs> he would kill on threads. The, such, like the sweetest soul ever. Yeah. How do you feel? What is your favorite platform as far as social media is concerned? Hmm. You know, I spend a uh, ordained amount on TikTok, so I guess it has to be TikTok. <laughs> TikTok is pretty lit. I ain't going to lie. Like the amount of things that I see on there in like seconds is insane yeah like i think um because i think i think i'm like, like the biggest social media person because like i only as of this year made a personal instagram <laughs> yeah so i i've just now started like posting more about like stuff that's not related to art yeah but 
Yeah, I don't know. It's it's all kind of the same to me. I kind of just want a site that doesn't glitch or have like a funky like algorithm, but that might be too much to ask for. Nah, this ain't 2008. It's over. That's it is over. Back. It is. I should have capitalized earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, imagine though if we were who we are now back in like 2008 when Facebook came out. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> and YouTube too. Yo, if I had the stuff I had uh, now back then, we would have been all over. Like I think OG YouTube was was a place. I don't know. Yeah, Numa Numa guy, the annoying girlfriend, and Chris Crocker. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. I. There's so many memories on it, though, but Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> and Doodle's looking nice. I have no idea what I'm doing. Like, I feel like you came in with a plan. You were like, I'm going to draw a fish. I'm going to show everybody that I, I can draw fish. <laughs> Screw you. That's, that's literally all girl. I got. I, I, that's why, <laughs> I don't know if you noticed, but my, my username handle literally is Koi Fit. Like, no me it was like um my nickname one of my nicknames growing up like because no one really called calls me or some people call me morgan but not a lot of my close friends don't really they call me like morgie or morg oh, or morgie. not morgie and, <laughs> yeah and then like one of my i had one friend called me smorgasborg and oh, then no. another friend called me mommy because momo was taken by the other morgan at school so they right. changed it instead of momo it was they changed it to I, so it was Mo Me instead of Momo. Okay. And then I have a weird obsession with koi fish, so I just put in Mo Me koi, and that's been my handle for a while. <laughs> Aren't they like incredibly intelligent? Yeah, they are very intelligent. Yeah. How do you feel about AI, AI art specifically? I think it's a good tool, but I do not think it should be allowed to be published as like creative property if that makes sense right like that context like yeah like i think it's like if you want to like play around in it like it i feel like ai has always been like an inevitable part part of our future as like with humans who have technology that was clearly where it was all going yeah um but i i don't think that it should be allowed to be like creative property like people can say look at this thing i made i don't, I don't think that really that counts the same way as like a craft um i just it just doesn't really equal to me but like overall if people want to play around in it i don't think it's bad like i've seen people like doing like um link like uh, what's the word linkedin photos in it and i actually think that's actually pretty cool because it's very hard to get headshots but <laughs> i <laughs> but it's like headshots that you like but i also recognize that's also taking away jobs from like photographers uh, so it's like eh. it, it's one of those things where it's like it's it, i feel like it's so new and i think we'll see regulations around it and i'll kind of they're going to yeah. definitely have to regulate it soon because i was on tiktok our favorite platform and i came across <laughs> it was like this video of um what's that girl's name that everybody loves now jenny jenna ortega oh jenny or Je jenna ortega jenny? yeah I think it's Jenna. Well, you know who I'm Pretty talking sure. about. So yeah. it was a video of her and Leo, Leonardo DiCaprio. And I'm like, wait a minute, this looks like, oh, wow. how is this happening right now? So I went to the page, yeah. turns out it's the AI filter that this person made. And it's like a one-to-one -one recreation of their face. So no matter what they do, it looks like Jenny or Jenna and Leo are talking and dancing in real time, like as those people. And I'm like, yo, this is gonna cause so much <laughs> trouble. Crazy. like. Forget the celebrities, yeah. just being a regular, regular person. If somebody wants to come at you, they can just frame you for all kinds of stuff. Yeah, like it definitely is like, yeah, it's too much sometimes. Like the deep fake stuff. Yeah. It's, it's not cool. Yeah, I think that's kind of like what, what's, once we see what's going on with it more, we'll yeah. get like regulation. Yeah. So I saw like there was that person who tried to like publish like a storybook out mm. of like, yeah, and that, it just didn't look right. Like, yeah. and then they so they ruled that he can't monetize off of it. Yeah, I remember there was a few people that did that because I'm I for some reason I still have a clubhouse account, so every now and again <laughs> I will go on and just listen in on some of the rooms, and it's usually like those super like 
hey i make 10k a day listen to me talk for three hours and listen to all my friends who also are scamming and making 10k an hour you know oh and God, yeah. they all talk about the ai stuff and creating things using chat chat gpt and all that stuff and whatnot and i think to a degree they can be useful in conjunction with real like human work right. Yeah, real skill. But a lot yeah. of them are just like, oh, all you got to do is just type in a prompt and it creates a whole book for you. I don't even know. I don't even have to write anything. I don't have to know how to do anything. Just type in a prompt and then boom, you got 10 books right there, y'all. Just sell it. I'm just like, yo, these people are like nuts. That's, yeah. And it's like, the issue is like people can start. If it's like, it's people are also now being able to like spot AI stuff. Oh, yeah. So it's like, there's clearly something missing if it's like not if it's if it's distinguishable from like real craft so yeah it's gonna be a minute before any of that <laughs> yeah i got marble fatigued <laughs> i think we all did i think now we're at a point where superheroes are not popular anymore and it's starting to wane on a lot of people like the last few things that i watched were just like not good and it's because yeah. and robert downey said this robert downey said this recently he because he was talking about he like his most important films or whatever he he mentioned like dr doolittle and some other movie and he was like yeah the marvel stuff is cool i'm paraphrasing it was just content it's not a film it's just content and i'm like that's actually like an interesting way to put it because if you think about it they release a movie like almost every year and it's basically the same cookie cutter type plot in a sense yeah you should say it like that yeah i can i can see it it definitely was content yeah I think, yeah like it hmm. So things like I love the Mar like the MCU lead up to that like final like end game movie. I think yeah. it's just beautiful. Like I was all in that every single time a movie came out Yo, in the movie. I cried at <laughs> that first joint when 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 uh Chadwick Boseman turned to dust. I was like <laughs> I was like, no, not Black Panther, not Spider Man. Why are you doing that? Was that was genuinely traumatizing. Yeah. Okay, so there's actually a funny story with that. One of my best friends and I, so we saw all the Marvel movies together growing up. So right before we went into, what was that last, the second, the second to last one, Infinity War, right? When yeah. Black Panther died, quote unquote, I was wearing a Black Panther t-shirt and he died and, and I we both looked down at my shirt and I was like, no. <laughs> and then we went and saw <laughs> the second one and the uh, in game and i was wearing uh, my iron man necklace oh my and... god it was you you're the reason why they all died yeah and then iron man died and then we both looked down at my necklace and i was like no. oh my god guys if you want to if you want to blame somebody for all those deaths in the mcu I'm sorry. she's right here i jinxed it i jinxed it it was so bad. It was kind of funny. Me and my friend, we were like, yeah. wow, what's the, what are the chances that that would happen? Yeah. Yeah. I will say um, the, the Spider-Verse movies, they, they oh, yeah. are doing that. Their- that, yeah. I will say, is phenomenal. <laughs> I have the art book right here next to me. I watched oh, that. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was, uh, pre- you had to pre-order it like months ago to get it on time. I don't know if it's still available now. But the moment I watched that movie, I was just like, yo. This is the greatest animated film I've ever seen in my entire life. Next it to Roger so Rabbit. Amazing. Yeah, like that genuinely was like a great, a great thing, to be honest. Like, I think I never, I've, I've never walked out of a movie theater feeling so, it's been a long time since I like walked out of a movie theater feeling like that amazed. I don't think that's like <laughs> the right way to put it. Yeah. Like, it's like wow what you got over there i i saw an ice cube with a smiley face like a mario character now you're drawing a little baby with a uh... yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, just <laughs> I'm, just drawing. I'm just drawing i'm just drawing i have no clue what i'm doing oh my this god this is like i how... love that <laughs> i drink i i'm just i'm just going with whatever i don't even know i wonder yo wait hold let me see something i'll just erase it obviously can i just like oh it's underneath it okay well yeah you're on the the layer underneath oh ah, that's so cool yeah you see it yeah yeah you can make a new layer if you want you i did not know on. that i do yeah. yeah i used to draw like this all the time i used to be obsessed with um adventure time oh gosh 
and I went through a phase of just drawing like Adventure Time for a very long period of time. Yeah. So now I have this weird like juxtaposition of like I can draw very cartoonish yeah. and very realistically. Right now I prefer realism, but for doodles, it's it's fun to draw the little dudes, right? And you got a little afro. I'm just so distracted by you now. Like I stopped it's drawing my thing. Look at the little afro. And you know what's great? I love that now every time we turn on our phones or our TVs or whatever, there's somebody black. Like there's so many black pieces of media now, like cartoons, it's, games, uh, TV. Beautiful. Book. It's it's yeah, we're we're in a good time and I hope it lasts. I hope it lasts. Yeah, we really yeah, our generation really grew up and said, We'll fix this. <laughs> <laughs> Like genuinely, we grew up and said we gonna fix this. Mm -hmm. and I feel amazing. I was at um Art Expo. My friend and I were at Art Expo, and even we noticed there was like a lot of like black art, and we were so happy about it. We were like, "Wow, it's everywhere," you know. Yeah. And it was like the first time I think I've ever been like at like a art museum and like felt represented. Yeah. In a very long time, and I was like, "Huh." I suddenly understand <laughs> get certain levels of audacity now. Because if I grew up seeing myself as big as this painting, I would be so arrogant <laughs> all the time. <laughs> yeah, I remember the first time I went to the um, the Brooklyn Museum. Well, not the first time I went there, but the first time that I saw uh, Kende Wiley in person, like his work, I was just in awe because... I at the time I've never seen anything like it. The juxtaposition that he had between the fine art paintings with all these extravagant colors and detail, and like the actual characters who were like, you know, in wife beater or or tank tops and do rags and 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 fitted. So I'm like, yo, this is some nigga shit right here. Like, I love it. Yeah, you're entirely right, though. I think Kehinde was also one of, like, the first people I saw, too. Like, yeah. I his art was at an exhibit at the Art Institute. Uh -huh. And seeing that, like, full scale, was, like, this glorious royal, like, painting of, like, figures and character, figures and, like, people that, you know, usually you don't see in that way. Yeah, It was so genius, the juxtaposition uh, that he did to put it like that. And it really like forces you to like view the black body and the black culture in like a different light. And he was one of the first people to kind of like force the fine art world. I feel like to really view that Cause it's like those these people that they most you know uh, I don't know what the right word is snobby. I don't know. I don't have another word. Snobby. That's a nice snobby way to put art. it because I got a different word. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> snobby people might not think that those people are like you know, worthy of such a grandiose scale of, like, painting and, like, style. And my favorite part about him is that he actually takes the pose from, like, old-school paintings that had real royalty in them. Yeah. And he recreates them with these, like, regular Black people, you know? And it really kind of, like, makes you, like, see them in the same light. Almost. I I'm glad you touched on it. What is going on with this thing? Oh. Which I'm glad you touched on it. Um, at the time when I went to go see him, I was working at this museum or this small gallery in Manhattan. And I was like, I went to the the director of the museum. And I was like, yo, Brett, I went to go see Kehinde Wiley. I had such a great time. It was amazing, blah, 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 blah. Just chopping it up. And what he said to me directly was like, eh, Kehinde's boring. I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he said. And I'm just like, you serious? This is like the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life, and you, you, and you know, you don't have to ask what he was, but it was just like, really, that's what you had to say? You couldn't even give some constructive criticism or anything. You just like, ah, oh, he's born. That's it. Yeah, I also had that happen actually, also with the you know, what they were without saying it, yeah. and yeah, yeah, she called him tacky, and I didn't really understand it and i don't know it's just like i feel like it's like the view of the lens like culturally is just different yeah because he knew his target audience and the target audience at the time was you know uh black diaspora people want to see themselves represented in these grandiose paintings and that's pretty much what it was at the time you know like when you enter museums you see all these like you see the same types of figures over and over again absolutely and, 
he knew that there was a gap and he knew that there was a, a market for that gap because there was a whole country, several countries, honestly, of people who would want to see art like that. And he, he did it for us. He didn't do it for them. And that's like always the important thing to remember is like, he definitely did it for the African diaspora, like anyone in the America, Europe, in Africa, any country in Africa. I think his father was Kenyan or Nigerian and his mother's African American, one of the two. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know, he definitely did it for, for anyone a part of the diaspora. He he views it like that. So we don't we don't need those approvals. It's all right. Absolutely <laughs> not. And I think that's sometimes people even those people forget it's like not everything is for you. Sometimes it's okay to not see yourself or sometimes it's okay to just see a different perspective and just know like okay maybe this is for a different audience maybe it's for a different demographic and that's why i'm not grasping onto it that's why i'm not getting yeah. into it or feeling it uh i think that's like um it takes some training to view media in that way because that's how i view um anytime i walk into a cartoon i know i'm definitely not the the, <laughs> the target audience i'm a grown woman who's going to see a kid's <laughs> cartoon it's like it, this is not for me so like anytime like there's something that I don't like in it. I have to remember who the target audience is. And I know it's not me. It's an eight year old girl, not a 28 year old girl. So Yeah. Like if you go to see Barbie, it's like, Hey, this is not for a millennial. This is for little, little babies, little girls yeah. or boys. That's what I, that happened when I went to see frozen too. Yeah. Uh, my friend and I were like talking about like this big plot hole gap, but then we're like, well, you know what? The 10 year olds aren't going to notice this. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like the it's like the ten year olds don't care about this, so we can't we we can't give it like a minus star for that. You know, that's just the the studio doing actually a good job at targeting their target audience. Absolutely. So, <laughs> so you're not really a big animation fan? Oh no, I love animation. Oh, you do? Okay. I, yeah, I I watch anything animation like all the time. Like I used I make it like a. A checklist to make sure I always go see whatever animated film is out. You said you grew up on the South yeah. Side. Yes, I am South Side born and raised. Where's so the here. South Side accent? Because I don't hear a lick of it anywhere. Surprisingly, this actually is a South Side accent. Is Despite it? popular belief. Oh my bad. Let me shut up. Sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get out of here. <laughs> no, it's it it varies kind of like where you go. Yeah. Um, the South Side. A lot of people. There's like a lot of. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of misconstructions about it, but um. It's it's large. It's extremely large. It's larger than I think people realize mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. um, you can get people who have like heavier Chicago accents and people who like have lighter ones. I think I have like a lighter one, but I definitely have one. Yeah, especially compared to like North Siders, I I have one. Um, you can I can hear it when I talk to them. Like I have a little bit like of a. I think. Going on based like history, a lot of like people from the a lot of black people from the south moved up to Chicago. Mm -hmm. So a couple of us have like a little bit of a southern drawl to it because yeah. all our parents and grandmothers do. So <laughs> <laughs> um, but um it's uh yeah, I got it, don't worry. It's it's really it's subtle. Um it's very subtle. I've yeah. also been like plagued by uh corporate America. So Of course it happens. Is that a bird with muscles? It is bird of muscles. <laughs> Yo, I was not expecting any of this. This is so silly. This is like, I love this. This is like a new side to you that I'm, I'm sure that many people online have never seen. I actually get that a lot. People always think I'm like super serious. Yes. And then they like finally <laughs> get to know me. I've gotten that several times in my life. I feel like I present very serious. Yeah. And then when like people get to know me, um, I am extremely goofy, like beyond belief. As once again the South Side trait. Yeah. South Side Chicagoans, we we are extremely goofy people. So this is uh, me making a, a muscle of a pigeon because the pigeons in Chicago are you know what are extremely tough. <laughs> I want you to paint this in in real life now. <laughs> real when, life I, when I get some when I get some extra money, I'm gonna be like, yo, Morgan. I need you to paint this pigeon bird thing. Apparently, once upon a time, humans uh, used to have show pigeons as like a thing. Like so doves? there's 
pigeons and doves are kind of like i think they're like the same thing yeah. i think like a dove is just a white pigeon yeah basically That's, yeah <laughs> so like they bred them i don't know if you look up designer pigeons they look crazy it's actually kind of interesting like they got like long necks and like <laughs> fur around like like extreme fancy feathers around the neck and whatnot yo rich people just have nothing else to do with their lives they will really just that sit there also, and just come up with anything that is also true is that a chain it is a chain you know this it reminds me of now you ever watch animaniacs not in a long time oh my god do you remember the pigeons <laughs> the good feathers it does look like that oh my god <laughs> it's like wait, what do i look like a clown and the one pigeon would just get mad all the time am i funny you yeah the name's bruno hey how, how you doing hey you got any in that uh that boyd feed yeah i like that stuff boyd. yeah yeah i saw a pigeon eat a, a a daggone chicken breast one time i was like y'all don't got no solidarity with the bird community oh they don't you just eat they any are, old thing they are like the og gangsters oh my Sorry, god i'm like getting really into i see that that's why I've, i haven't drawn anything in the last five minutes just looking at you <laughs> I love it. This is basically what my sketchbook looks like. It's just stupid shit like this. <laughs> <laughs> I got to fill mine out. I have so many. Like, I have these little tiny ones, like these little tiny black ones. And then I got, like, someone gave me a moleskin. I'm just like, I can't even just doodle anything in that. I got to, like, do some real stuff in this moleskin. It's actually ironic because I have a moleskin and I doodle stuff like this all day long. I start, I put <laughs> <laughs> really stupid stuff, like the most wholesome animals with muscles is usually that's your thing just animals with muscles i really enjoy it there is like a friend from grad school i drew we used to draw on like postcards and like leave them around yeah the, the, our, our the computer lab and she started drawing the animals with muscles and then i started drawing the animals with muscles and then next thing you know we had a small collection of drawings oh my god of like frogs pigeons cats with like these burly muscles like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> We also like drew one punch man like oh, as, a, as a as a bird and stuff like that. One punch man as a bird. Yeah, that's because crazy. he was bald. He looked, he looked like a bird to us, right? <laughs> or like a bald eagle. Yeah. Oh, God. I feel like I have a really goofy stream of consciousness, which is why I'm very silent on social media because I'm like, if I like posted my stream of consciousness online. To like people where people can see it i'm sure everyone does i don't know what it is but it's like i'm actually like really goofy like i don't think i think like i actually have an issue of not taking things seriously but i present so serious and i don't know how to like fix that yeah and <laughs> it's happened to me in college where like this girl i'm actually like super best friends with now but our old boss we used to both work for the same person yeah and our old boss told she told me uh, after we became friends that our boss thought i was so serious that she told her to walk up to my dorm room and start dancing all crazy like and see what my reaction would what? be. So yeah, because they didn't think I would like have like an expression or reaction to it. Yeah. And then she did that and that's what how we became friends because she did that to me. And then I started dancing all crazy with her. And she <laughs> was like, wait, what is this? What's happening? And I was like, this is fun. They didn't see that coming. They was like, gotcha. You were like, gotcha she told me that she's like yeah i did that because we thought like your reaction would be like how dare you do this and exactly you, you joined in like yeah that's that's usually how it goes i've been told that several times that i've been i i seem very quiet and serious but i i am actually a goofy human being like all i do is crack jokes all day long i don't know <laughs> yeah no i get that what's your favorite thing to draw um I like I, I lean more towards because I don't know realism is great and I love that people have the technical skills to do that but I, I love the expression of a cartoon you know and I love that there's so many limitless possibilities when creating a cartoon whether it's how you tell the story how they characters react um just different things you know if you look back at the classic and i'm just i'm going way back like fleischer cartoons like betty boop and popeye mm -hmm. like that stuff was some of the jankiest cartoons you would ever see but they were still like really dope and fun because they didn't take themselves too seriously it was all about defining or defying logic you know like popeye would fall off a building and then eat it you know what i mean it's like what <laughs> and i just love that yeah it's very true 
like cartoons are super expressive and I love like fantasy art and whatnot. Yeah. So it's like one of the anything that like kind of extends reality. It's always one of my favorite things. Absolutely. Like pigeons with muscles. Exactly. Look at him. He's ready to he's ready to rock. Hey, hey, yeah. Toots. Hey, you wanna go for a ride in my uh my Oldsmobile <laughs> nest? Yeah, I got oh, one. I put these together the other night, you know. You know. My mom told I'll me go. I had to get out here and stretch my wings, so you know. I'm out here stretching them now. Yeah. <laughs> you got some of that gobble goo. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. This is amazing. He's got a cigar. Oh, he's the Don. <laughs> Oh, he's the dog. We got We got to change the voice now. <clears throat> so I've heard you've been messing around with my daughter, huh? What do you take <laughs> her for? Some kind of floozy? Well, let me oh tell you God. something here, punk. You keep <laughs> flying and flapping around her. We're gonna clip your wings. You hear me? We're gonna clip oh. your wings. <laughs> That's a really good threat to the <laughs> Dawn Pidge. Dawn Pidge. Oh my God. Do you have anything coming down the pipeline this year that we should know about? Oh, actually, um, next month I will be doing an exhibit at the United Center, working with a uh, collaboration with All Star Press and the Chicago Bulls. Um, I'll be doing a small exhibit with them there. I'll post that on my social media. Uh, up and coming. Uh, coming up because right now it's what I'm working on. And I don't want to preview it before the big, you know, unveiling right. of it. Yeah. And I also we'll be having a, a uh, group show at the Bradbury Museum of Art in Jonesboro, Arkansas. If anyone oh, is in Arkansas, you can come see my art down there, too. Nice. <laughs> that is so cool. That is so cool. Yeah. And then where can we find you across the social media space? You can find me at the handle Momikoi, which is M O M I K O I. And for Twitter, it's the same uh, Momikoi, but with an underscore at the end, because that's the only social media site I could not get my handle on. Oh, so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, everything else like Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, uh, it's all, all Momikoi. So. Awesome. Awesome. So for those who are lazy and they didn't want to spell it out themselves, I will have all the links to everything she just mentioned in the description of this video. But Morgan, thank you once again for coming through. I'm gonna take my glasses off too. Yeah, we're gonna match. <laughs> but thank you once again for coming through for the art block. And thank you for demonstrating how amazing a pigeon with arms can be. <laughs> no problem. I'm so happy to have done that for you. But ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be it for this episode of the Art Block. Catch us next time. But until then, stay rad, stay dope, stay gold. We out. Deuces. Yes.